So this talk is called BDD in a Functional World. And the reason it came about is because about five months ago, I started learning functional programming. And the language I used was um, F Sharp. And this is the logo for F Sharp here. Uh, now, if you want to learn F Sharp, the best thing you can do is follow this chap, Scott Veloshin. Uh, he has a website called F Sharp for Fun and Profit. It's uh, an amazing resource. It's actually mentioned in the Google documentation for F Sharp. Uh, and this is his latest book, Domain Modeling Made Functional. And what he does in this book is something amazing, actually, is that he takes uh, complex domain concepts and he bakes it straight into the F-sharp type system. And the reason he can do that is because F-sharp has this amazing thing called a composable or an algebraic type system. And what that basically means is I can create a type. And a type isn't like a class in OO. It's an incredibly lightweight thing. Um, you don't have to have any implementation in a type. And with that type, I can then compose it to make another type. And then with that type, I can compose that to make another type. So armed with this composable type system, what it allows you to do is describe what something should do without having to describe how it does it. And I, the minute I saw that, I thought, hello. There's another language I know that allows you to describe what something should do without having to describe how it does it, and that's Gherkin. So for me, there's a huge overlap between a functional programming language and Gherkin. Who'd have thought? So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take a specification, and from that, we're going to extract a type system. And the specification we're going to look at is this one. OK. So this describes a fairly basic piece of business functionality. Uh, you go to a website, uh, you buy some stuff, and you check out. And you're presented with two options. Option number one is you can put in your email address, and you can check out as guest. Yay. Option number two is if you've previously visited the website, and you click the I register button, you've got the opportunity to log in. And the reason for that is you might be able to get some discounts. So in order to look into this, I head off over to the order billing department. I speak to Sue, who heads it up. And she says, Chris, basically, we have a list of users, registered users, registered customers. We get an order that comes in. And then we look to see whether or not we have a registered customer for an order email, because they're the same thing. And if we do, and they're eligible, we apply their discount. A discount can be zero. OK, so this is our specification. Any problems there? Good. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to effectively split my screen and go to my IDE. And I'm going to keep my feature on the left. And on my right-hand side, I'm going to build up my type system. So before I start, I'm not going to put any baffling F-sharp code up here. So no running away. OK. So we shall start at the top and work our way through. So what is a feature? Well, a feature doesn't really do anything in of itself. It's just a place where you put uh, scenarios that have some sort of commonality. And a place where I put types that have a commonality in F-sharp is a namespace. So we're just going to use the same terms there. OK. Let's just work our way through the scenario. So the very first step in the scenario is a given. And the given is just describing a data structure. And data structures are fairly easy to model. I won't go into much detail. This is what's called a record type. It's just a key value pair. Yeah, it looks a little bit like an object in JavaScript. Yeah, uh, nothing new there. What about the when? OK, well, the when is a little bit different. Uh, it's clearly not describing a simple data structure. It's describing some sort of action. Now, in an OO language, I I'm kind of stuffed at this point, because if I wanted to model an action, I need a class. And there's no mention of classes here. There's no factories or services or anything like that. Luckily, however, in F Sharp, I don't have that restriction. I can model an action as a function using its signature. And a function signature is simply a list of all of its inputs followed by its output. So in order to model uh, this particular function, uh, it just looks a bit like this. So all I've done is I've taken the name of the scenario, and I've called it the name of the, the, the function signature. And the way to read this is the last one is the output. Everything before that's the input. So what this says is, in order to calculate an order total, you give me a string and a float, and I will return you a float. OK? Well, that's a bit nasty. Uh, let's use some aliases. And an alias, there's nothing type safe about an alias. It's just a moniker. It just helps you describe something. So now what this says is, rather than talking about strings and floats and things like that, it says, in order to calculate the order total, you give me an order email, you give me the spend, and I'll calculate the order total. OK? Now, that looks like a pretty good start, uh, but I have a bit of a problem with that, and that is this signature is supposed to represent this scenario. I've given them the same name. And this scenario definitely knows about registered customers. It's literally step one. But this signature doesn't. So I would say that in order for this signature to accurately represent that scenario, I need to get that type into it. Yeah, does that seem like a reasonable thing to try and do, right? OK, how am I going to do that? Well, according to my scenario, there's only three of them. Let's just pass all of them as a list. 
Well, I know that's not really possible. And the reason I know that's not possible is not because my specification tells me, because there's only three here. The reason I know that's possible is because I sat down and had a conversation. And the leader of the order billing team, she told me, there's millions. Clearly, I can't pass all of them around as a list. OK. Well, what's really going on then here? Well, we were told we take the order email and we use it to find a registered customer. Well, that's just another action. I've already modeled one action as a function. Let's just model that action as a function and pass it into this function. And that looks like this. So now what this function says is, you give me the ability to find a registered customer by order email, and you give me the order email, and you give me the spend, I will calculate the order total. So hand, hands up who thinks that's kind of what's going on here. Yeah, kind of? OK, brilliant. Next question. Do I always get a registered customer? No. So with this setup, if I had this setup, and I had this function, and I pass Mary into it, what do I get back? Now, null is not a registered customer. That makes no sense. Do I maybe get a default back, where eligible is false, and discount is zero, and a blank name? Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Luckily, F-sharp's got you. Because in F-sharp, there's this amazing thing called the option type. What the option type can be is one of two things. It can be some and then a payload, some int, some bool, some registered customer. Or it can be none, and either are equally valid. And isn't that really what's going on here? Mary isn't in our list, but that's fine. She can still spend her money. Now, in order to use that option type in my uh, signature, all I have to do is put the word option at the end there. Right, now what's happened there is when I come in on a Monday morning and I'm the programmer that's going to implement this function and I handle the response to this little uh, parameter that I passed in, I no longer have a registered customer. I've got this amazing thing called a registered customer option. And if I don't handle both getting one, the sum case, and not getting one, the none case, my compiler warns me. So imagine that. My compiler tells me whether or not it's possible that that particular example is likely to pass. No unit testing involved there at all. My compiler warns me. Now, that's pretty amazing. So, now what this says is, excuse me, if you give me uh, the ability to find a registered customer or not by the order email, and you give me the order email, and you give me the amount spent, then I will calculate the order total. Hands up who thinks that's what's going on now. Yeah, OK, yeah, fair enough. I agree. <laughs> I also think that's kind of going on, uh, what's going on based on this scenario. Um, but just like so many things, uh, the minute I've got a handle on something, I go and read some, something else, and it completely changes what I, what I understand. And the thing that I read was very simple. It simply says, business logic has no dependencies. And I think about that for a second. I think, yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. <laughs> business logic has no dependencies. Why, why should it? It's logic. Um, in fact, I would go a little bit further and say business logic is a pure function. And a pure function is one that is wholly deterministic. It is one that's, whose output, given a bunch of input, and knowing the rules, I can always predict. Um, also, it doesn't do anything else. It has no observable side effects. It doesn't talk to databases. It doesn't talk to web services. It doesn't throw exceptions. So business logic is a pure function. OK. Well, that leaves me with a problem then, because this definitely is not a pure function. It could be. If this little function here that goes and gets my registered customer, if that's just working off my in-memory list, which is three, sure. But I know their registered customer sat in an access database written by Jeff the contractor who left 20 years ago. It is very unlikely that this is going to be a pure function. So I can't have this functionality in here. I have to take it out. OK, well, I'll just park it up here and call it find registered customer. Ah. Right, so effectively I've ended up back where I started. I've ended up with a function signature that still doesn't know anything about registered customer. I've tried passing all of them in, and I, I can't do that because there's blinking millions of them. I've tried passing the ability to get one, and I can't do that either because it turns my business logic, or it pollutes my business logic. It's no longer a pure function. So I I've literally only got one option left to me, and that's to pass one of them in? Okay. Well. <laughs> I know that the order email uh, is the same as the registered customer email. I was told that. That's how we look it up. So I could lose the order email from this function signature, and it still have exactly the same information in it. So let's have a look at that. OK, wait, wait a second. If I make my registered customer an option, look what happens. The output 
of my find register customer simply becomes the input for my calculate order total. I don't have to solve this problem using a bunch of dependencies. This is a pipeline. I can do one thing, and because I've got that amazing option type, which has encapsulated this particular business rule, which is you can be, you cannot be in our list, and that is a perfectly reasonable thing. So because of that, I can now create these two functions. This second one now is pure. Okay. So I said at the beginning I wasn't going to show you any baffling F sharp code. I didn't say I wasn't going to show you some F sharp code. So what this looks like in the real world is this. So let's have a quick look at this. The first thing to note is, can you see above here, that's just a, a, a plug-in to Visual uh, VS Code called Ironide. And what's happened there is my compiler has figured out that the signature of this particular piece of implementation takes in an order email, a spend, and it returns an order total. And isn't that exactly what this uh, scenario is doing? Okay? The function itself is named the same as the, the scenario outline, and this sits in the order billing namespace. So if someone phones up and they say, Chris, I've got a problem calculating the order discount, I know exactly which file to look in. Uh, the first thing we do then is we go and find our registered customer, just like my specification, and then we've got this funny little operator here, uh, and what that is is pipe. That basically t says, take the output of my find registered customer function and pass it, pipe it, into the input of my applied discount. And that's now the pure function. So one of the nice things about pure functions is that they're pretty well impervious to change. Because they're wholly deterministic and they don't do anything else, I know for a fact that the only reason you'll ever have to open up that applied discount code and change the functionality of it is if you change anything to do with that example table. And that is the only time you'll ever have to change that code. So when we talk about single responsibility principle in solid, another way of thinking about that is the single reason for change. And there is only one reason to change that order total, uh, the apply discount function. You can upgrade your access database, some cloud-based offering. That will still work as long as you pass in a registered customer option and the spend. Okay. The second thing to note here is what's called composability. And what we've done is we've taken our scenario and from it we've extracted those two small functions. And then I've plugged those functions together to create another function, this calculate order total. Now, calculate order total itself is now just another function with a couple of inputs and an output. And that function itself is used in another pipeline called process order. And that's just a function with some inputs and an output. And that process order is used in another pipeline called handle request, which is just another function with some inputs and outputs. So one of the key things about functional programming, you create something small. You define it with its inputs and its output, and then you plug it together to create something bigger. Basically, it's functions all the way up. So I know I'm kind of running out of time a bit. I'm going to tidy up now. Um, this is the unofficial, one of the unofficial logos of F-sharp. And seeing as you're now all F-sharp gurus, you will totally understand what this means. What this says is, take the output of F-sharp and pipe it, pass it, into the function I love. I love F-sharp. I'd like to update it to this. Thank you very much. Thank you.